sitting next to her, Marina Sirtis. I was sitting on the set. Imagine if you will. It's a spaceship. Not unlike the Enterprise. Not unlike the Enterprise. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane sitting next to me. I said, Seth, did you see those actresses that auditioned for the blank, blank, blank part? I said, yeah. I, I, he, I said I chose who I thought was the best actress, and he said, yeah, she, she was pretty good, but I think we'd like to do something special with her partner. Somebody, what do you think? Somebody from your show? I said, well, what about Marina? Then McFarlane's face lit up, and a little light bulb went off on top of his head. You think she'll do it? So let me find out. <laughs> Texas, Texas. Before I was done texting, are you available, Marina? I'm in town till the 8th, and I go to Greece. That's my accent. Right. Right? Don't do it again. All right. What do I talk about killing your dog? Oh. They don't like that whole tone and that whole part of my life. Anyway, I'm proud to announce on the latest uh, episode of The Orville that I was privileged to direct Marina Sorti. News. Are you ready for this? Sir, there's more great news. John. There's more. I'm not allowed to talk about Discovery, but Seth gave us permission to make this announcement. About Orville, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> in addition to my anxiety, which I think is what you call a great get on a show, do you know who else is on the episode? I'm, on the episode. I'm, on the, I'm in a good episode. I'm in a really good episode. Any of you remember the villain from Insurrection? the Academy Award winning F. Murray Abraham. Abraham. Oh my goodness. How's that for a get? This is amazing. You guys are really pulling out all the stops on me, Orville. And listen, listen to the lineup of admirals, some of who have been on before, also from Star Trek. Sure. Ron Canada. Amazing. Ron's not here. No, Ron's not here. How about this old Klingon favorite playing a Mocklin? Tony Todd. Tony oh my God. Good lineup. That's good. And who else? Who, I, one of the finest comic actors ever. Oh, who could it be? Ted Danson. No uh, way. That might not. Even you're surprised. That is. Wow. Are. Thank you for casting me in that episode. Well, I gotta <laughs> say, you seem to get the best response. Yes, I did. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you. It's because they're scared of me, and they know that if they don't cheer and holler and love me, I will come down and beat them. <laughs> and say mean things about them. At Are you still doing that? No. No. You're I over that. I'm over I'm over the wobbly throwing, Marina. Marina doesn't throw wobblies anymore. Are you still talking about yourself in the third person? Like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> If our hey, president... Whoa, whoa. Are we going to stay our, off the... Pro no, I'm just saying if our president can do it, then why can't I do it? Right? Is there a good reason not to? Uh, yeah, it's kind of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit, what, what is it, a bit, um, what's the word? The menopause has fried my brain, people. Please pay attention. <laughs> no, honestly, please pay attention when I'm talking, because if I go off on a tangent, I will never remember what I was talking about in the first place. So you have to pay attention, because at some point I will say, what was I talking about? And so you have to tell me. 
So we just rein you back in. Right, yeah, okay. you just have to say, you were talking about so and so, thank you. But that's the menopause, and all you young women can sit there mocking me, but you just wait. You just wait 20, 30 years, whatever it is, I'll be dead and gone, and you'll be like, oh, Marina, God rest her. She was right. She warned us of the storm coming. <laughs> It's become my mission in life to talk about the menopause because I did human biology, right? The word never came up, ever. We talked about menstruation, girls' bits, boys' bits, reproduction, all of the above. Menopause never came up. And every woman on the planet goes through the menopause. Yes. You're like the convention's counselor, right? I am. I am counseling you right now. And men, when your women are going through the menopause, you have to take a mental pause. <laughs> How many times have you used that line? Many. I feel like you should see Menopause the Musical. It's down on South, South Las Vegas Boulevard. See, I should be in it, starring in it. Uh, speaking of starring and things, I want to ask you a little bit about... If, I don't know how much we can say about the Orville. Uh, without an errand, but how was it getting back in front of Jonathan's uh, gaze when he's behind the camera? You know what? I said, it, I said this earlier. He's heard this before today, but I'm going to say it again. And I'm really happy to hear it again. Because there's, there's more people here. Um, I've been in the business. I've been an actress for 42 years. Yeah. And um, I've done many, many hours of TV and a few films. My favorite director of all time. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because he sat next to me. <laughs> My favorite director of all time. Sure. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, now, Marina, I, I want to dive into that a little bit and ask you, like, is it, is it how he can communicate with actors? Is it just the freedom he gives you? Like, what is it about Jonathan that makes him such a good director? You know what? He's a force of nature, and he gets it. He gets, he, and I said, you know, there are two types of directors. There are the directors who, like, do, you know, whizzy things with the camera and shots and, yeah. you know, all that. And then there are the directors who are good with actors. Yeah. And they usually fall into two separate groups. This one is both. Oh! This no. one is both. <laughs> no, he really is. Because, look, the studio's happy with him. They keep hiring him. So he's obviously, the yeah. studio, to be honest, don't care about the acting. They would love to make movies without real actors, right? They would love it all to be CGI, because actors are difficult. For some know? directors who feel that way. Yeah, I know. And they would love us all to be gone, and for this to be just, you know, drawings in a computer. But they're stuck with us, and we're difficult, and we ask questions, God forbid. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, but he, he gets it. The studio loves him. The actors love him. The crew yeah. would walk on glass for him. That's very important on a set. So it's a happy set. Every, the work gets done. It's, it's, there's no tension. There's no angst. You, you know you're going to get the work done. You're producing a good product. You've got a great guy at the helm. It's perfect. Oh, wow. Now, perfect. Thank you, Inzotti. <laughs> How, uh, now, let, let me ask you... Uh, Marina, if you could, and Jonathan, Jonathan jump in here. Too, here. Right, yeah. I, but I'm curious about, I, I talked to him enough. Oh, all right. Uh, now I'm curious about, could you compare Jonathan directing The Offspring, the first episode of TNG that he did, where Data makes a daughter, lol, uh, to the current Jonathan? How, has, it, has it changed, yeah, his he's, directing? He's very, he's, wait, well, he, was, he was a little nervous, I think, when he started. Um, yeah, it's fair to say. little nervous, a little over prepared, a little over prepared. He's he's the confidence now because he knows he, he know you know that you know what you're doing. Sometimes, yeah, but I pretend to know what I'm doing. Well, it comes. I act as, as if I know yeah, what I'm exactly. doing. Exactly, I that, always have a plan. Yes, you ha exactly. always have a plan. You know, there's nothing worse than a director who says that was great. Let's do another one. Yeah. Or, you know, that was perfect. Let's do one more take. That's my least favorite thing. I hate yeah. that. You know when they that say that perfect. to me? Let's go again. Yeah, I say, if it was perfect, print it twice. There you go. <laughs> O.T. Henderson. Yeah. Do you know what? That's why they hate me. So, <laughs> except him. He loves me. But, you know, I, because I, I do... think people hate you. I think this is... No, the... I know. They used to, but not anymore. Yeah, it's all right. It's yeah. all right. I did, I did have a bit of a bitchy, you know, you know, kind of oh. thing going. Well, let's dive into that. Who's on the phone? You Did we did. take it? No caller ID. No, yeah, I don't take it's, it. It's, it's probably Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 
hide his number so you'll pick up. Uh, now, Jonathan, if there was advice, I'm just going to ask about your directing style right now because that's sort of the subject we're on. If you could talk to 1990 you mm -hmm. as you're sitting down for the first time on TNG to direct, what would be the advice you would give yourself? You know how much I love you, right? Not enough. That's my least favorite question. Shall I answer it for you? Go ahead. Do you want to go back and talk? I got I'm gonna answer it. I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer it for you because I know this was one of his um, go-tos. If in doubt, cut to Marina's face. Yeah. <laughs> but that's in the editing room. That's in the editing room. I room. always gave you a close-up because if we got in trouble, especially in the conference room, you were always listening actively. Acting is? Listening. And reacting. And reacting. And not bumping into the furniture. And not bumping into the furniture. <laughs> and, oh. and living in the moment. And living in the moment. And making sure that your bald spots are covered. Yeah. Because <laughs> Hollywood's all about the hair, folks. It's all about... We have created the hole in the ozone layer with all the hairspray oh that is used. <laughs> Especially on TNG. Of the, of the, you're talking about sitting around the conference room while you guys were making the show. It's called Observation. Observation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the time when we, oh. had, we had to pick up a shot with an admiral named Admiral Singh, and Admiral Singh had been released, so we safety pinned Admiral Singh's toupee to the back of the conference room, <laughs> and we shot over the uh, guy's wig to Patrick as if he was actually in the chair, and Cosmo did the dialogue. <laughs> True story. True story. Do you know what? We were bloody good. I tell you what. We were good. We were good, because we pulled it off. Do you remember the time that when... You know, <laughs> visualize, if you will, the bridge. Jordy, LeVar, David, Brent. You got that reverse. The beautiful and yeah. talented. <laughs> Marina. Old Baldy in the it middle. Sir Old Baldy. Sir Old Baldy. <laughs> Sir Old Baldy. While Bill Riker. Yeah. And then that big horseshoe, right? right. And at the back of the horseshoe, big old dumb stupid wharf. <laughs> Now, for four, five, six seasons, all of us talked to like this, or we talked to each other here, Marina right. and Picard and Riker would talk, or um, Var and Brent would talk. Did anybody ever talk or look at Doran? Never, not once. <laughs> Nobody ever, ever, ever looked back to hear what that big turtle head would say. <laughs> One day, he was so fed up with the way he'd been treated. He comes on the stage, with a raw egg in his hand. Goes back up to his position, the back of the horseshoe, looks over Sir Old Patrick's uh, chair and squashes the egg <laughs> on his head. And the albumin and the yolk drip down his British visage. Fact or fiction? <laughs> It's one of my new bits. I know. It's very oh, good. Boy, it's... Jason! Oh I just want to say hello because I'm leaving. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay, Jason. Of course. I love We've it. We've after trekked many times together. He's, he's... This is a private moment. Look away. <laughs> They're giving you a moment we for your so... private moment. I'm, I, I, I've been, oh, I couldn't, right? I've been, oh, yeah. Well, there so then when I was four... <laughs> no, no, don't go! Let me just say something nice about the public. It's nice to see you. Okay, get out of here. He doesn't like Why? it when you say nice things Why? about him. Oh, Jason Isaacs, ladies and gentlemen. Jason Isaacs! Captain Lorca! No, um... Captain Lorca, by the way. Do you know what? That how, how, how fabulous an actor is he? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my, my God. Do you remember him in The Patriot when he was the villain in The Patriot? I hated him in that movie. And what about in Brotherhood? Yes. The accent. I... Have you seen him in that thing where he plays the uh, friend of uh, Khrushchev? Stalin, the Stalin the movie. Stalin show. He's spectacular. He, he's always spectacular. Also, now that I can... Apart from being a Liverpool fan, he's almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> when I blew it last year and revealed that there was a... Uh, Alternative, what did I? We'll call it a mirror universe. Mirror, mirror universe. universe. Now that you watch the season, how many of you watched Star Trek Discovery? <laughs> when you watch it again, as you will, you will see how 
brilliantly, Jason peppered in. Yeah. The character. He was, it was spectacular. And he thought about it as we went through the season. And it was done tastefully, and it was done elegantly, and it was done subtly. He's a masterful actor. He is. He's one of the best. He really is. Yeah. I want to work with him. I've never worked with him. He's quite good. He's yeah. really, and he I, loves it. He loves the craft. Yeah. And I, we were mates before he got Star Trek, so... Mates? Well, you know, friends in my country. <laughs> Not mates means friends in England. God, I can hear all the rumours starting. Everyone. <laughs> Marina said she and Jason Isaacs made it. That whole, that whole company <laughs> is astounding. You, they are. You better find I have. I have to. Now I'm going to get, do run to the old. Another old chestnut here. Oh, you got a good one? Uh, well, you've heard it already. What a surprise. Yeah. So, oh, so when I went to visit Jonathan on the set of Discovery, because I was in Toronto shooting something that I can't talk about, um, I had to sign an NDA. Non-disclosure agreement. Non-disclosure. They all know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> they, you can get treated like this at home. They, <laughs> the news, they know what an NDA is, Stormy Daniels is, will save America. Um, I've had to sign so many NDAs, I actually feel like one of Trump's mistresses right now. But I'm burn. I like the reaction of, oh, that's true. It's, it's true. That's, there's so many. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> the old chest Yeah, 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 but I didn't get paid $130,000 for signing. I knew there was another <laughs> inning. Yeah. Uh, now, of those, what were your favorite days on the set of TN? Like, when you would see on the bridge sheet that bridge. it was just bridge. Bridge and observation when Anytime we were all together. Anytime they threw us all together, it was such a headache for the director. We had a director so... He did two shows in the first season. And then he, he ran off the soundstage. Refused to come back. We were impossible. We were like herding Children. cats. Children. The work, the work was so serious. And because Patrick set this bar of preparation, yeah. Yeah. everybody came he to tried. Work. They knew their lines. And we were, and it was, you know, you know how serious the show was. Sure. So <laughs> when we were between takes, we were just nuts. We were just... Mad as a box of frogs. Exactly. And, <laughs> So you, you drove a grown adult, a grown adult, adult with a director career off, out, of, oh, listen, out of Paramount. Listen, I drove the director of Nemesis off the set the first day I worked. You sh <laughs> I wish you had he worked threw, He threw his... Oh, oh, he threw his hat on the floor and walked off the set. Oh, well, he went back to editing. It's fine. It's, yeah. It, I wish you... Well, no, yep. I'm um, with, We all saw it, Marina. We all know. Right, all right. I'm not saying another word. Okay. It launched Tom Hardy's career. It did. Yes, Tom Hardy now is a superstar. He's just a character actor getting paid like a superstar. Oh yeah. Love him. And he didn't fix his teeth. That's important too. It, you know why? Because you Americans are obsessed with perfect teeth. <laughs> obsessed. Well, let's look at yours. Well, my, I've never had anything done. I never wore braces. My teeth are fine. They're That's the Greek teeth. That's the Greek. You don't teeth. have English teeth. <laughs> Am I right? That's fair to say. Your Greek heritage gives you your. I remember. This is a oh, flashback please. right here. Go ahead. I remember saying to Marina, "I'm going to shoot you from the side." She said, "I hate my profile." I hate my profile. I said, "Marina, your profile is beautiful. Look at it. Look at it, Matt. Can you see it's it? Gorgeous. It's I've, I've got a Roman nose. It's Roman all over. Oh, battle <laughs> Did anyone see Mamma Mia? Yeah. Okay, I just have to ask. Have you gone to see it already? Of course, I saw it the first weekend it opened. Excuse me, if Here. you're shooting something that's supposed to be a Greek island, shouldn't you shoot it on a Greek island? Yeah. Got 120 to choose from, for God's sakes. And then I shot it in damn Croatia. I knew from the first shot it wasn't Greece. Croatia, I said. Wrong color. Croatia, I said. There's wrong a architect every day. Wrong architecture. Wrong vegetation. So young and so bitter. Bitter, bitter. That's, that's, <laughs> that's you know, how, uh, that's how we Neil... need the money in Greece right now. We're broke. That's right? how uh, Neil Armstrong used to watch Star Trek. They're not in space. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I can tell. 
Star Trek The Next Conversation, available wherever podcasts are downloaded. Plug. Uh, no, Jonathan comes on once in a while for Ask Frakes. Great segment. I call him on the phone. He answers. It seems like it took them a long time to figure out how to use your character. And it, there are scenes where you're just like, this is not fair to... Decorative is the Decorative. word you're open for. Yes. Just decorative. And when you said they didn't know how to use my character, what sprang to mind was no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> uh, they just didn't know what to do with Which is why I got written out of so many episodes in the first season. Well, it's a problem, right? To well, have because, someone on yeah, the bridge because, who can be an empath. Yeah, because they go, oh, well, blimey. If she, well, not, they didn't say blimey. <laughs> You know, they would go, oh, well, if she can sense what's going on, that we have no story, get right throughout the episode. And so that was why I was written. And I was, I have to be honest, Matt, I yeah. had a very insecure first season because they were always writing me out of episodes. And um, I went from being the favorite because when I was cast, I knew I was their favorite. Jim yeah. loved me. Yeah. It was obvious that he loved me. And then it got to the point where I'd be, I'd be on the set, if they walk in towards craft service or whatever, and if, the, if a producer saw me coming, they would literally turn around and walk away. Oh my God. So I knew that my job was on the line. I, I mean, it was, you didn't need to be a nuclear physicist to figure it out, you know, I was like, I knew that uh, I was likely, I was on the bubble, you know, like we say in Hollywood. On the, so, on the bubble? Yeah. yeah, I don't think you were ever on the bubble. I was, Major told me. Major told me for a fact. She's uh, years later. I, I confronted her because we were very close. As she you tell know. you to, to drop the accent. No. I feel great pain for both of them. No, well, she didn't tell me, but I was doing the Beta Zoid accent, yeah. and then she showed up, and she was obviously from the American sector on Beta Z. <laughs> Well, in fairness, I just always assume that your father... Yeah, and then we met son. Dad, and he was from bloody Oklahoma or somewhere, yeah. so the accent made no sense at all. <laughs> anyway, see, what was I talking about? Go on. We're talking about the use of the character oh, the use of the character. and the development of yeah. Yeah. Troy. So basically, and I, you know, I finally told Denise this, because I said to Majel, years later, Majel, I was going to get fired, wasn't I? And she said, yes, you were. Jean came home one day and said, we have one too many women. Yeah, one too many women. You need a doctor. Got it, I hit a nickel. You, yeah, you need a doctor. You need, you need a, a security chief. You really don't need a psychologist. Yeah. And it was when Denise... Nothing could be further from the truth. Very right. so true. But Denise had no clue. But when yeah. Denise left the show, she saved my job. Wow. Yeah. That's a, see, it's... I always just assumed wow. that it wasn't... You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Is that true? Yeah. I can't imagine. That solved the problem for them. They would have two women on the show, and... What happened to the, um... Do you know the backstory of Riker and Troy? Yeah. And were lovers, and had served together before, and, and were in a relationship? Yeah. 
That was part of the pilot. Yeah. And then magically, it disappeared. Or, it oh. disappeared. You know why? No. Because you had to be Kirk. You had to be banging all the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't Kirk. Well, well you, you were. were. They I wanted, mean, they, they were wanted the, close to make it Yeah, they wanted the romantic lead, you see. And Patrick, and let's be honest, we love him, but he's too old. So. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story about how Patrick appeals to women. <laughs> I was cast as Commander William T. Riker on Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We lived in half of a twin. I went home to visit my parents, Doris and Jim Frakes. And I went out, the refrigerator was on the back porch in twin houses, so I go on the back porch to get a beer out of the refrigerator. On the refrigerator of the house that I grew up in is a poster. This big. Whose face? Old oh, Baldy. Patrick Stewart. <laughs> to make it worse, I remember where the poster was from. It was from one of those Star Trek magazines, and it was actually a two shot. The other shot was me. I was folded into the curve of the refrigerator door. In my own house. Hey, Mom. True story. Oh, my God. Okay. See, my mom used to carry a picture of me around in her wallet in, cause, uh, in the section where you put your license so yeah. you can see so that every time she paid for something <laughs> it'd be like why do you have a picture of Deanna Troy in your wallet because that's my daughter <laughs> right she was proud this is, yeah this is the person who the year before I came to America and got Star Trek said to me you know this acting thing really hasn't worked out there's an opening in the Bank of Cyprus on the high street. You're bilingual, why don't you go and apply and get a proper job? <laughs> yeah, and then she goes from that to, you know, yeah. She was very proud of She me. was proud of As me. well she should be. By the end, yeah. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Uh, you should, I mean, it, for me it always felt like it was never your fault. You're doing everything they write for you perfectly. Listen, I, like and I always said, it's like, there's no story. I'm just an actress, you know? <laughs> It's like, when Patrick Stewart, you know, I, I used to have those wonderful lines that were obvious to anyone with any eyes in their head watching the program. Captain, he's hiding something. You're not supposed to videotape, right. doctor. Hey guys, yeah. no videotaping. And um, I think the last time I said that, Patrick goes, we know that, you stupid cow. <laughs> you waste of space, like that. And he went and he looked at me and he went and hid behind Brent. <laughs> it would have been amazing if in the show you say that to him and he just turns and says, uh, uh, and it's, you know, suspend transmission while he's talking to a Romulan, then turns to you and goes, You think so? Yeah. He's not? Are you sure? <laughs> Hang on. And he goes back to the. <laughs> but it's a hard, it's a hard role to even like have to find stories for but the way they finally were able to use you I, it was to your credit i think that they worked hard to figure that out well you know i well i mean let's get real and it sounds a bit vain but i got popular yeah yeah right i got popular you're also a wonderful actor which didn't break well thank you but you know suddenly people were dressing up as me at conventions and you know when they came out with the and still uh, are yeah, when they came out with the action figures, out there. they didn't make any Troy action figures at first. No. There were no Troy action figures in the first... That's um, the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I was going to be gone. They weren't going to need them. Oh my God, oh, Marie. Yeah, the whole thing that happened that first season. You see, I was, like, I was just like, don't say anything, maybe it'll go away, you know. Yeah. Uh, did you, both of you, when you... At what point in the series run were you just like, oh, I'm on this freight train and it's... Well, I have to be honest, at the third season of the show, so third season, I waited until we were three years in before I applied for my green card. Because I knew that they would have to re-advertise my job. Oh my God. When you, yeah, because they have to prove that there's no one else in the country that can do your job. So I was not secure enough until like the end of the third season to even apply for my green card because I knew they've got to audition people, they've got to do it, it's, it's, that's the law. Yeah. And I, but the way they worded it, the ad in the trades was, you know, Greek British actress, five foot three, dark curly hair, you know, hazel eyes, 
British accent. You know, I mean, it was so specific. Yeah. But they still had to audition like three or four people. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never heard this story either. Same. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Yeah. It's fun doing panels with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a minor useless information, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jonathan, what about you? Was it when you saw Patrick Stewart on your parents' fridge that you knew it was a runaway train? No, it was around season three when uh, it was pretty clear that we had a... Yeah. I didn't understand the concept. I know this is an anathema to you. I, I didn't know that Star Trek was the cultural phenomenon that it is. So I, before I auditioned my seven times over six weeks to play the part, had You're to... You're too in? Oh my God. Yeah. Rented videotapes and watched the show. My wife, Jeannie Francis. <laughs> You know her best is Laura, coming back to Port Charles on General, General Hospital. General Hospital the series regular, one more time, Janie Francis. She was a big Kirk fan. Oh, she knew all about the show. So I was watching to get some sense of what the show was really about. I mean, yeah. And then I got it, and then we were doing it, and then it seemed that we, it seems like a good time to tell my first convention story. Please. It's an old chestnut. Where there were about you know, an audience of a thousand people in Syracuse, New York, it's freezing cold, and the show had barely aired, and they were very, very resistant to the idea of an English captain and a new crew, very loyal to the Kirk and Bones and Spock world. Reticent, hostile, whatever. I was a nervous wreck, I didn't know what was expected of me, and I'm standing, waiting to go on stage in the dealer's room where they were selling, obviously not Troy, <laughs> but they were selling the, um, the, the action figures, the younger, thinner version of all of us. And they had, you know, the limited die lot data for 40 bucks, and they had Geordie for 45 bucks, and they had Captain Picard for 50 bucks, and there's a sign at the end of the table. Buy any action figure, get Riker free. <laughs> True story. You've all heard it before, right? And you courteously had a nice, but that's patronizing a, laugh. You know, no, no, it's a great story. It's not. You know what it is? And this is this is. It's like I'm, a familiar song. It is. It's like going to because you've all heard the stories a million times. You know, so we're always amazed that you show up. We are. Um, but you've heard the stories a million times. And I said this to someone, and someone said to me, you know, it's like going to see your favorite musical, Marina, and hearing your favorite songs. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, then I should tell them what about when, yeah, you should tell when them Will all. Wheaton, who we watch grow up in the show. We watch grow up. Um, he's a he's grown man with he's his beard. He's 46 or 47 years old. It's just wrong. <laughs> he finally got his driver's license. On the show, oh they yeah. He bought the this, same car Patrick no, had, which is a, a Honda, Honda Accord. Accord. Honda Accord. Honda Accord. We're walking back to the car park, or to the garage, as we call it. And he's now my height. So he looks at me like this, and we just finished, we just got wrapped, we're going back to our cars. And he says, you know, Frank, I can tell by the, by the music that comes out of your dressing room and the, and the way that you dress. You used to be cool, didn't you? <laughs> that, well, is, that is no, that, perfect Will. But the, fun, but the funniest thing was that Patrick and Will bought their cars at the same time, must have been over the same weekend, and they both bought a Honda Accord. And when Patrick saw that the child had the same car that he bought... He went out and bought a Jag. But went out and bought a Jag. Green Jag. Jag. <laughs> now, we do... Uh, this is a perfect note uh, to ask that we have audience questions. Uh, I believe the microphone is to my right. Hello, how are you? There we go. We have light. We have an eyes on the left as well. Uh, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start on the right. Weird, right? Hi. Yeah, so we start with you. How are you? Um, this... Set up in question is for both of you. Imagine if you will. Uh, the Rikers have two toddler twins, one a female and one a male, and they've just learned how to walk and now they're running around. So which Riker maneuver would you teach each one of them? <laughs> and what kind of constructive criticism would his Imzadi give him? And as a bonus question, what is the Thomas Riker maneuver? Oh, did, did Thomas Riker have a maneuver? No, but didn't you famously say one time that you thought Thomas Riker was cuter than Will Riker? Yeah. Right. A little bit. 
A little bit, right? Bill didn't lean quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do have a pitch that we'll share with you. Yeah. The Rikers in it's space. Big. Half hour, single Sick camera. Home. Right up your alley, by the way. Sick I'll, I'll write it. They're wacky Uncle David, their little dog Worf. <laughs> Couple of toddlers. The kids carry the show, we work three or four days a week. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah. I love it. It's not a bad idea. It's a home run. Yeah. I'm not even, I'm going to put it in your but, Alaska but home. I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to watch this. I don't agree with not spanking children. Good. Good. I think, okay. I think, listen. You, I know, because people go, oh, you can't hit children. You, can't, you know what? You know what, Marina you know says what? To, to... You can't negotiate with a two-year-old. Tell, two. tell them what you say to children when you're okay. working with them. I do. This is what I say, because I've done Snow White in the last four or five years. I've done the Wicked Queen in Snow White. I know, you feel that's a stretch. Um, <laughs> I played the Wicked Queen in Snow White twice, and our dwarves are children, which we put dwarf heads on, you know. So, this is the first day of rehearsal, we walk in, we're introduced, you know, the producers and the directors do their bit of spiel and, or introduction, and then I say, okay, listen up, kids, I just want you all to know, before we start, I do not have a problem hitting other people's children. <laughs> it takes a bit spanking. of... Spanking. Yeah, hitting, spanking, whatever. And half the mothers, half the mothers are like horrified, and the other half are like, oh, thank you so much. Well, I think that is uh, the Riker maneuver that she will yeah. be using on the children uh, on the left side here. Sir, what's your question? Hi, uh, my question's slightly more for Jonathan, but I'd love to hear both of you chime in. Uh, so whenever the topic of romance or sex came up on the show, uh, this weird thing happened where the camera would always cut to Commander Riker, and he had this big, goofy grin on his face. Uh, so I was wondering, what was, what was like the genesis of that? How did that become a thing? I, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. I'm, I... No, wait a minute. It's the same loopy grin that all men get when, people, when the topic of sex comes up. <laughs> Girls, you say sex to a guy, they're like, Am I gonna get lucky tonight? You see that look again? He's like, There you go. You know what um, you remind me of, though, with that nice Rikarian beard? It's another famous song from the album. After the first season, where I was clean shaven and the writer's strike happened, we were all called back and in a meeting, I showed up with a full beard because I hated to shave, and Roddenberry said he had famously long hands. And I'll do my Roddenberry impersonation. Jonathan, I, I love the beard. It's, it's, it's nautical. It's nautical. <laughs> we'll keep the beard for the character. Are you all right? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So after this meeting, he and uh, Rick Berman and the king of makeup, Michael Westmore, take me to the makeup trailer, and they're all armed with black eyeliners. <laughs> and they draw on my face the shape they think the nautical beard should be, and then they start to trim hair off. And Gene says, oh, it'll be decorative. <laughs> so eventually, they shaped this beard into what they thought the nautical decorative beard should be, and we put it on film, they decide they don't like it, so they're gluing hair back onto my face. And, <laughs> and as a capper, in the Urban Dictionary, what is the definition Oh, we're done. Oh, you finish your, finish your sentence. What is the definition of... The opposite of jumping the shark. Is Riker's beard. Gro growing the beard. Oh. Thank you all very much for coming. Obviously, the band is here to play us all. Hey, Matt. Yes, that was great. Oh, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.